four years, I have been dreaming of taking you on a trip with me. Travel has changed everything for me. It's taught me how to love myself, broaden my worldviews, and I have made lifelong friends along the way. So I'm really excited to be partnering with Christy Ashby to take you on an adventure meets self-love retreat happening February 2nd through the 6th. We're going to be playing in the Caribbean just off the coast of Cartagena, Colombia. We're going to be kayaking, paddle boarding, snorkeling, picnicking on the beach, having sunset cruises, restorative yoga sessions, live music by the bonfire, massages by the beach, food prepared by a private chef, and so, so much more. So come join me in February. Unfortunately, spots are very limited, so make sure you're heading over to the link in description to snag your spot today. What's up? This is Austin and Monica, and you're listening to the Profitable Nomad Couple Podcast. A show all about breaking free from the conventional and designing a life that's all about freedom, adventure, and fulfillment. We are a digital nomad couple, we're life coaches, and we are full-time adventure seekers. Join us as we jump into a bunch of different topics, including travel and culture, entrepreneurship, mindset, and personal development. Our mission is to help you create a life that's authentically yours. So let's dive in. You were born to fail. Now, I don't mean that to be really discouraging. In fact, actually, it's a really good thing. And the more we can harness and embrace the fact that we were born to fail, the better off we're going to be. Now, let me explain here for a second Because today we are going to be talking about how we can harness and embrace failure to live a more fulfilling life. And actually, we're going to go into how our brains were actually designed to fail, how it can help us remember, refine, and become better people. We put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect and to avoid failure at all costs that actually I think we can be limiting ourselves and costing ourselves lots of learning opportunities and it's keeping us stuck. So the goal of today's podcast is to really help you recognize that it's okay to fail. In fact, you should be failing and if you're not, you need to be pushing yourself harder. Um, I often like to think about just like little babies. I love watching babies learn because they're so uninhibited. They don't care what people think of them. And they are so free from societal and cultural pressures. And when you're watching a little baby start to learn how to walk, the first thing a baby does is get up on its hands and knees and start to rock back and forth. And then they fall on their face. And then they'll get up again and they'll try again. And then they'll fall on their face. And eventually they start to crawl. And then when they start getting ready to walk, they start pulling themselves up on couches, on tables, and then they fall on their butts. And then maybe they get ready to let go of the couch and then they fall on their butt. (laughs) And this happens over and over and over again as a child is learning how to walk. And we love it. There's nothing more exciting than seeing a little baby start to take their first tentative steps towards you and then watching them fall on their butt and then having them like laugh and giggle and pull themselves back up and try again. There is nothing more exciting than that. But can you imagine if this baby were to fall on their face and go, oof, that was embarrassing for you. You should probably just stay on the floor. You are better off there. Why would you even try? That's super embarrassing. That look at look at that. There are people out there running marathons already and you can't even stand up. Just stay on the floor. Can you imagine saying that to a baby? No, right? Like none of us would ever say that to a baby, but yet we say that to ourselves over and over and over again because we expect ourselves to be perfect. We expect ourselves to be able to learn something new without any failure. Yeah, I would I would say the main goal of our message to you today is not to look at failure as this big black monster that we try to avoid because I think that's what we do a lot of times. We do everything we can to avoid failure. We don't go into certain situations. We won't go uh, try something new. We won't learn a new skill. We won't try and start a business. We won't try and make a new friend at a party. Whatever the situation is, we avoid failure like it's this big, scary thing. And and it is a scary thing. It's also not something that we need to avoid at all costs because like our brains are basically made to assess the times that we fail and figure out what went wrong and create a new strategy to overcome it. And so that's like the fastest 
quickest, best way to actually learn and get better is jumping into something and messing it up and failing because then we're going to, our brains are going to be trying everything they can to figure out what happened. And that's just how we learn. That's the fastest way to learn. So we don't want you to avoid failure. We've kind of become conditioned to avoid failure from the time we were really little and entered into the school system, where all of a sudden there was a right and a wrong answer, and we had one shot to get it right. Otherwise, we got this big, huge red mark on our paper with the grade on the top, and we have been conditioned and taught to avoid failure. But like Austin said, that's actually not how our brains are wired. Our brains are wired to adapt and change and recognize the mistakes. In fact, our brains are constantly searching for ways that we are are wrong. It's constantly searching for discrepancies between expectations and reality. And when those two things don't line up for whatever reason, it takes a snapshot. It remembers that so much better so we can start to adjust and make changes so that that won't happen again. And that is how you learn. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that failure brings up a lot of big emotions for us. And I think that's positive. Like it brings up positive and negative emotions. So when you fail, you feel frustrated, you feel disappointed, maybe you feel angry. And that's going to make that experience a lot more memorable. It's going to stick in your head a lot more. I'm sure you can think of times right now, looking back in your life, of times that you failed at something. I also think it brings up really strong emotions in the positive in the sense that once you if you fail at something, when you go back and you keep working on that problem, you tr- keep trying to get better at it, when you finally make it happen and you succeed at something that you failed at before, the feeling of pride and the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction is way stronger after you failed at that thing and then you go back and, and succeed at it way stronger than it would have been if you had just succeeded at it right off the bat. So I think in both cases, the strong positive and the strong negative emotions makes this a very memorable experience, which just adds to your learning capability, I think. So let's look at a time in our past. Like, for example, I <laughs> I played basketball when I was little. So think of a time, maybe you have a similar experience as this, but when I was playing basketball, I was pretty little. I was maybe 10. Um, and I would go to shoot a basket and I would miss. And it would be so embarrassing. And I knew that everyone was watching me and I would just start to laugh because I was embarrassed and I didn't know what was happening. Everyone was looking at me and I was freaking out. And I would just sit there giggling under the basket, trying to shoot it over and over and over again. And then of course it just got worse and worse and worse. And I had this emotional, like I remember so vividly that moment because I had that emotion attached to it. Number one, it was hilarious that I couldn't get a basket. I was really embarrassed that everybody was watching me and I was the only one on that side of the court because I was faster than the other kids and I got there sooner and I had a good 10 seconds to myself on that side of the court and I couldn't shoot a basket. I had the pressure of the team relying on me and I could hear you know, my parents cheering for me in the background and it was so emotional for my little 10 year old body to handle. I can remember that moment so vividly, but there are tons of other moments like basketball practices or other things that I don't remember at all because I didn't have that strong emotion attached to it. So I'm sure you have experiences like this in your life too, where you recognize that the memories that you hold the strongest are the ones that have the strongest emotion attached to it. When we fail at something, for example, trying to shoot a basket and not being able to make it, our brain is remembering that instant so much more so that it helps you moving forward. Next time I'm ever in that situation where I'm trying to shoot a basket and no one else is around, my brain knows what to do, what not to do in order to avoid that situation that I was in as a 10-year-old kid. So if we're going to rewrite how we look at failure. Let's think of it like a workout because when you're working out, what you're doing is you're literally tearing apart your muscles. You're breaking it down so that new muscles can grow and they get bigger and stronger. So think of failing at something instead of beating yourself up over it or trying to avoid it. Think of it like a workout for your brain. Every time that you fail at something, instead of thinking of it as this big scary thing and and getting frustrated at yourself and trying to avoid it at all costs, think of it like you're working out. 
Every mistake is stretching your capacity to learn something new, to grow and to get better, to be a better problem solver, to understand the nuances of your situation better, and to, in the future, do it again, but even better. For me, that's helpful to think of it like a workout. So hopefully that's helpful for you too. Um, I used to, it's funny that you say that because as a child, I used to have this leapfrog game or maybe it was bop it or something, but every time you failed and you lost the game, it would say, do it again, but better. And so when you said that, that just like came into my brain. But really though, as we go through and we work towards different things, as we allow ourselves to fail and make mistakes, we are going to become better. We're going to be able to do it again but better over and over and over again. And it's going to be so, so much easier if we can just learn to embrace the failure. And I know it's not as easy as it sounds coming out of my mouth. I know sometimes it is really hard because we do have those strong emotions attached to it. But as we just work to embrace the failure as part of our learning process, I promise you that you are going to be amazed at how much easier and faster it is to become better, to learn new skills, and to become the best version of you. Oh, hey, you made it to the end of this episode. Thanks for hanging out with us and listening. We hope you are now feeling inspired to go out and design your own life. We would love to get to know you better. So sign up for a free coffee chat with us so we can hang out, talk about your goals, and how we can help you get there. All you need to do is head down to the description section of this episode and click on the coffee chat button. All right, chat soon.